Hey everybody, and welcome to another Jamovi tutorial, learning statistics with Jamovi. This is the final video in this series. Oh boy, it's been a lot. There's been a lot in this series. I'm glad I did it though, because you can put these together and package them into a playlist, and there you go. You have all of the general statistics for an undergraduate psychology major or social science adjacent you know, major. In this particular video, we are going to end the little mini section on non-parametric tests, and we are going to be using the Kruskal-Wallis test, the Kruskal-Wallis test. So it's a one-way ANOVA between different groups, at least two, but usually three or more, uh, because otherwise you could use a non-parametric t-test like the um, Wilcoxon or some other or some other one. Uh, so in this particular one, the Chris Scott Wallace is for a one-way ANOVA, non-parametric one-way ANOVA, and this is because one of your groups has violated, um, or the DV has violated um, the assumption that uh, the, the data should be approximately normally distributed, or we have ordinal data, okay? Or we have ordinal data. Now we can do um, the Chris Scott Wallace on even data that we think may not be uh, violating this assumption, although this data set that I have here indicates that we kind of do. We kind of do. Um, I've used this data set a bunch to just do the uh, factorial ANOVA. But in this case, what we're going to do is um, use mood gain as our dependent variable and drug as our um, grouping variable. Placebo, anzafree, or joyzepam. So a placebo, a anti-anzalytic, or a antidepressant called joyzepam. Anzafree is anxiety-free. Joyzepam is just a play on how many antidepressants have uh, zepam at the end of their name. So. Again, this is a, a test that you would only use if you violate your assumptions, okay? Violating your assumptions. So how do we do this in Jamovi? Really, really simple. It's a module in and of itself in the base version of Jamovi. You don't need to install any of the additional modules except to get this data set. That's the LSJ hyphen data set through the modules thing. And many of the videos, if, you, if this is the first video that you've watched, then you might want to take a look at some previous videos and I go through how to get that module and these data sets on your computer. But if you open up clinical trial, not clinical trial two, clinical trial, okay, they're two separate data sets. We're gonna jump into there. So how do you do this? You go into ANOVA, because that's what the, that's where it is. And so, oh, it's a one-way ANOVA. I'm gonna go in there. No, 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 no. You wanna go to the bottom part here and non-parametric. This is the Chris Scow Wallace test here, one-way ANOVA. Um, we are not gonna be doing the Friedman um, repeated measures ANOVA test. We're just going to do independent groups here um, in this series. So Chris Scow Wallace. There's a lot of background into how this statistic is created, but ultimately you end up with a chi-square value. So you read the chi-square just in the same way that you would read a chi-square, right? So this is because chi-squares are for ordinal and nominal level data. So that's kind of what we have. So we're going to put mood gain in here. We're going to make we're, we're assuming that mood gain um, is not normally distributed. And so we have an issue in our groups. And it's intriguing because if we go to data, you can see that we only have 18 people. And so 18 people does not make a good uh, case uh, case scenario for the central limit theorem. So, I mean, that's that's six people per drug group. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, oops, click on here. And you can see that we only have a dependent variable, grouping variable, and then effect size, and then DSCF pairwise comparison. So we're going to get both of those. But we're going to move drug into the grouping variable. Okay, and you can see that even without the effect size and DSCF pairwise comparisons, we do have a significant relationship among the three drug groups. So our chi-square value is 12.1 with the degrees of freedom of two, and since chi-square is a known distribution, we plug in two, okay, and 12.1, and we get an exact p-value of 0 0.002. It's a significant, diff there's a significant difference in mood gain between one of these three drug groups, placebo, anxiofree versus joyzepam, okay? So let's grab our effect size, which is uh, epsilon squared, <laughs> not to be confused with any of the other effect sizes that you're aware of. Epsilon squared, I believe, but I could be wrong about this. Epsilon squared is, and that's a lowercase epsilon, as you can see. It looks like uh, it looks like error term. Um, epsilon squared is very similar to um, eta squared. Similar to it. I, I don't know if it's the exact same interpretation, but I believe it is similar in that way. It's just not eta squared because we are dealing in non-parametric non statistics right now um, because our test statistic is actually chi squared and not f. And then let's get us our DSCF pairwise comparison. So this is going to give us a Wilcoxon ranked pairing. OK, uh, so Anzafree to Joyzepam has a W of four. That's a significant um, difference there. And it's a positive four, which means um, Anzafree, I believe, has a greater. Mm, no, I think it's the other way around. Joyzepam is uh, higher mood gain. But I have to get they don't have descriptives here. Anzafree to placebo. No, no, no difference there. And Joyzepam to placebo is negative. So, yeah, Joyzepam is the one that leads to the highest mood gain, although. As this recording, there are a big old meta-analysis that came out um, that suggested the SSRI um, imbalance slash deficiency of serotonin 
Well, not a well-founded conclusion. There was certainly not a lot of evidence to support that general theory of serotonin in your brain as a mechanism for depression. That is, imbalance and or deficiency leads to depression, which is what SSRIs and SNRIs are attempting to mitigate. So, yikes on the joys of Pam there. So, <laughs> talk to your doctor. You know, if you don't want to take the drugs, then there are other ways that you can manage depression and anxiety. Um, yeah, I'll just say that because, you know, it takes all kinds and there are so many kinds of treatment. So, that is to say that this is how you do the Kruskal Wallace one way ANOVA non parametric test with the Dwash Steel Critchlow Fling Fligner, Fligner pairwise comparisons uh, for your non parametric ANOVA needs. Please leave your comments, suggestions, questions, and feedback down below. Thank you for watching this video and this series. See you next time. Bye.